This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. Hey, this is Jeff Thorne. I am the writer, producer, showrunner of the Avengers Black Panther's Quest TV series. And you are listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. Welcome to the show to give you all the news, views, and opinions in the world of gaming. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extras. So let's start with your host, Xavier Josiah. Power up and game on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extra Select Start. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. Please, if you notice that I sound different, please forgive me. I am actually coming down with a sore throat and a little bit of congestion. Some people call it a cold. So I am going to stronghold through this as much as possible and get through this but i had to come in and do this because i've been waiting to talk about this game for quite some time it is finally here i beat the game i fully reviewed the game so in our final stage we will be talking about marvel ultimate alliance 3 the black order there's no way in hell a little cold is going to stop me from doing this so please forgive if i sound a little bit different here in this particular episode but we also got a lot of other news to talk about uh in the world of gaming as well so we're gonna get underway with that actually not as much news but the news that i have is worth talking about for instance you guys remember the old game ninja warriors like i and i'm mostly speaking to the old school gamers of like the 90s and the 80s during the late 80s in particular 1987 there was a head of its time two-player action game from taito call that featured very detailed graphics and a triple wide screen arcade monitor in arcades this was just this this game blew get arcade gamers away back then because it was unlike any other game that we've ever seen at the time no game had three screens you know that was showing some water some sort of a panoramic view and it was called ninja warriors and i i'm really wondering i'm thinking this was out before or during Ninja Gaiden because everybody used to get these two uh, mixed up but you can easily see the difference between the two once you start playing and by the way the original arcade Ninja Gaiden is out in the arcade archives as well on on PlayStation and uh, Nintendo Switch as well so this game also involved ninjas hence the name Ninja Warriors and but this was a little bit different these ninjas were robots these ninjas were geared to take on all combat they were fighting against a militia of you know militant army guys tanks other robots as well uh even monsters and giants or whatnot they were they had to go through all of that so this was this game had like a little bit of ninja guy and slash terminator with it too and your deal was you played a female character so you were a female ninja but if you play two players you also played a male character uh male ninja as well and this was kind of like this was a lot ahead of its time on a lot of reasons one the main character was a female which you know aside from metroids and all those characters you didn't see too many lead characters as a female and the beautiful part about this was not just the fact that the game looked great at its time but the but it also like the best part about the game the game was very hard first of all there is no way in hell that anybody could tell me that they beat this game in arcade and didn't spend a ton of quarters because they made sure that it was extremely hard to beat even now that it's out on the playstation and uh nintendo switch you die a awful lot and playing this in the arcade it was so hard but the beauty of it was seeing you die and how you die you died in the most epic fashion you like as you go along and your meet and your gauge meter starts to fall because you're getting hit 
your clothing starts to go away and reveals that you are in fact a robot. So if you deplete all the way down, the army comes up to you, keeps stabbing you and killing you as you explode. And it's like this epic Terminator explosion death scene comes in, which was absolutely awesome. So you didn't really feel bad about, you know, dying all the time because you died epically (laughs) in this case. Well, as I just mentioned, it is out now for the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4, I believe. And I finally got a chance to beat that damn game after all these years. In 1987, I would have never beaten this game. 2019 is a bit of a change. They brought it out. They gave us the option, the opportunity to play through the game. And for a great reason. And I finally beat this game. I finally got to the end. And this is a very interesting end. I never in my wildest dreams thought that it would end this way. But it makes sense. These guys are robots. You make it to whatever, I guess, the White House or... I. It look, the funny thing about it, you, the, I, the object of the game, and I never knew this before, is that you reach all the way to, I guess, I don't know whether, whether it's the embassy, I don't know whether it's the White House or the Russian, whatever that is, but the character that they were trying to kill off at the very end, to me, looked like Gorbachev. And if you guys don't know who Vladimir Gorbachev... Read, read your books, read history, read uh, you know, American history or world history. Um, but it looked like Gorbachev, and it, that was, you know, before Vladimir Putin. At, at the time, Gorbachev was the guy that everybody was, you know, looking at in Russia. And uh, it looked an awful lot like him, that this is the guy that you're trying to assassinate. And you take him out. So once you take him out, apparently... The government, or whoever the U.S. military, whoever is in charge of this, or whatever military that's in charge of it, doesn't necessarily say it's U.S. military, but, you know, you kind of put two and two together. They show a screen of the, I guess, the general or admiral or whatever, ready to hit a button the minute that you kill him, and he hits the button, the whole entire building explodes, and that's how the game ends, and I'm like, wow, you know what? That all makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So I managed to beat the game. You know, it was hard. Even even with the ability to keep playing the game, it wasn't easy to play. Again, I question anybody who's ever beaten that game. And if they beaten the game, they rather own the arcade game on their own at home. They had their own arcade cab. Or two, they spent an enormous amount of money in quarters to, to beat that game. There's no way in hell. There, I, there's not a doubt in my mind. Somebody can tell me that they actually beat that game on like at least a dollar's worth of quarters. Damn near, at least not even five dollars worth of quarters or ten dollars. I'm talking, it would have cost you maybe almost a hundred dollars in quarters to beat this game. So, lo and behold, if you never want, if you ever want to get a chance to beat that game, now's your chance. You could go on a the Nintendo eShop and check it out there and you could I'm pretty sure it's on PlayStation 4 I can, I'm never sure if Xbox or Microsoft are have the arcade archives in under their belt but I know for sure that they have it from PlayStation and Nintendo Switch so go out of your way to get it now if you've ever loved that playing that game and wanted to beat that game now's your chance go at it but not only that the reason why they're bringing it out is it's definitely a reason why they're bringing it out because They are coming out with the new game or the remastered game by Natsumi, who's another one of my favorite, you know, Japan companies, um, developers as well. They developed a sequel to this called The Ninja Warriors again in 1994. They have, again, remade that game, and now it's coming out for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation, which is due out tomorrow. In Japan, it's out today. It will be out today in Japan, but it will be coming out tomorrow on the 25th. I am looking forward to playing this game. It looks awesome. If you haven't seen a trailer of this, everything looks redrawn, and they they, uh, did a redesign of the character sprites and everything in there. It looks like the ultimate Super NES game now. And not only that, you get not just two characters, you get four characters, I believe five characters that you could play uh, with, and they're all robots, I don't know if they're going to explode at the end or whatever like that, but I hope they don't, but I hope there's a deeper, you know, 
a deeper story to them on this case. And now with that, too, you also have the ability to actually uh, do more moves as opposed to the original one, which is like you only threw stars and you were able to use your kunai to, you know, get through a whole multiple amounts of army and military or whatever like that and tanks. So this time around, you have more moves and move sets and act, uh, actions to do in this version. So again, it's coming out tomorrow on the 25th. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to definitely pick it up and hopefully uh, get a review on it next week. It looks like a lot of fun on there. So uh, be on the lookout for that when it comes. Uh, other news. Thank you, NetherRealm. I knew it was going to come around sooner or later. I knew they were going to patch it up sooner or later, but we finally got a patch for all of the systems for the recent situation that's been going on with it. If you guys remember, I talked about when Shang Tsung came out and you played on the Tower of Time, there was a glitch and there was a crash where you would, pl you would face Kronika and apparently it would just shut down. They fixed that now. Uh, with a patch uh, 1.07 if you haven't played Mortal Kombat 11 in a while uh, go out of your way to go download that patch and um, here's what they have for the patch right now improved stability in tower of time and classic towers you definitely attest to that uh, improved stability in the crypt fixed a crash when viewing replay following online matches fixed a crash when attempting to re-enter a tower after returning to character select. Fix a lighting glitch during the specific Johnny Cage fatality. Fix several bugs related to the stage uh, interactability. Allow guest players as player two to use and modify player one's custom variations. Certain skeleton, uh, skeleton key doors in the crypt now give proper rewards. Another one is in the crypt. Uh, in the crypt, prevent some hanging bodies from respawning after they've spared. Uh, another one is improved performance in the Coliseum Beast Pen stage. It lasts my thoughts. So I checked it out after re uh, doing it immediately. Had no trouble getting through that last Chronica stage. It finally let me beat that stage and get through. So looks like everything's back in order. Had no crash issues yet. Looks like things are getting back to order. I knew that NetherRealm would eventually fix it, and they did, and now it plays much better. And it's getting closer to the point that they're about to reveal another character coming out. They talked, they showed since uh, Shindel, I'm sorry, Sindel recently. They also showed Nightwolf recently. I think Ed Boon's screwing with this. I'm still holding off that Spawn is going to be the next character we're going to see come out next. So I'm hoping that is the case. It's a lot of people's eagerly anticipated character to come out and i'm looking forward to seeing that soon so we'll see but i'm happy to be able to play mortal kombat on a nintendo switch and not have any uh stability problems as well so uh kudos to you guys so last bit of news i believe i'm gonna have for this segment is that marvel avengers gameplay footage leaked at san diego comic-con i'm sure you guys have heard that or even seen the footage already if not you can find that footage anywhere now because everybody everybody went at, at it uh apparently a, a guy who remains anonymous or whatever his name is get managed to go into hall h and you know took the risk of showing the gameplay footage and his and the angle that he was able to see it so we got a not a thorough look at it but we got enough to see what's going on and we got to see the gameplay footage so run it down real quick on what i thought about it I, honestly, just overall, this game has got a war. This has got a war, Avengers, without a doubt. That's there's no other way to say it. This game has got a war, and guess what? And I mean, the recent got a war from PlayStation. And guess what? I'm not mad at it. Uh, you know, I while that got a war is not my favorite got a war of all time, and I'm not being biased because I had TC Carson on my show. It was an awesome game, but I, I if I can take anything for take away anything from that game is that i hate the back panel camera of that game i like to see full freedom and movement of the characters i like to see the front side of the characters as well i'm never really too much of a fan of that like i do like war on cybertron i do appreciate that game i do love what they did with that game i do like uh, god of war and it was a great game with a tremendous story 
But overall, I love the freedom to be able to see your body move in different directions and whatnot. So, um, with that said, yeah, this is a very God of War esque type of game. So, I, it, you know, if you're gonna imitate, uh, you know, a certain game or take shades from a certain game, you can't go wrong with God of War. You know, with Santa Monica and what they did with that game. So, here's the situation: the gameplay. For Thor, for instance, is very resembling of this, and that it really, really shows a resemblance of that situation. Um, it just shows him brutally beating, and a lot of people said it too, and I agree. He's killing people. They are murdering the bad guys in this game. Like the hammer that he has, and what he does with that hammer is insanely it looks insanely brutal yeah, i absolutely think it's hilarious to see it but yeah he there's no way that, that these guys are surviving the blows that they're getting in there iron man does have a god of war but also a anthem style gameplay where you can do air combat and ground brawling as well so which is funny because you know many people know that anthem took shades from uh iron man and you know giving you the ability to do your own iron man thing now the funny part is i think from a character design or a tech design you know format anthem may have beaten them on the just the visual the look of the armor because i'm not i'm still not a fan of the iron man armor in this game or any of the looks of this game everybody looks like a knockoff version of the characters or 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 your parents dressing up as the avengers that's what they look like right now you know it, it just it just does so they had that the hawks game the hawks gameplay is just melee style smash mouth style as you would expect uh captain america has a bit of a flashier combo because of the shield you know and even funnier about him is that he has a move that shows him kicking his shield to hit an enemy which is very similar to marvel ultimate uh marvel um uh, ultimate alliance 3 if you notice in that game they do the exact same thing there's a lot of things that you know this game is taking well i i think it's more coincidental i'm not sure but there's a lot of things that a lot of significance and parallels uh similarities that the, the this upcoming game has that marvel ultimate alliance already has and we'll talk about that in our final stage review as well so uh black widow has a very small but really cool QTE battle scene right here. So I don't know how far they're going to go with her. They don't show too much of her doing any type of real combat. It's just mostly QTE, you know, quick time event, you know, uh, battles. And uh, all of the characters do have their own super moves with the gauge that goes up. And eventually you will be uh, able to take out hordes of enemies through that, you know, type of situation. Very similar to like you know, uh, Spider-Man in, in Ultimate Alliance. So, nothing new here. I just, here, uh, there is one scene, though, where a little girl, or a young girl, is crying to find her mother, only to trip and fall into some blue smoke, which looks like Terrigen, and she definitely looks like Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel. So... And there is a narration, there is said to be narration of a young girl, so that could be her as well. Uh, the folks at Crystal, Dyma uh, Crystal Dynamics and uh, Square Enix claim that they will show the actual footage in HD and every to everyone at GamesCon on August 24th. So you just got to wait till then. And hopefully we see a lot more improvements and polish changes in this game. Because at, at the end of the day, I want to play this game and I want to enjoy this game and I want this game to be successful. But I also want the familiar. The, I want it to be familiar. I'm too sick to even say the, the term that I was going to say. Um, I want it to be familiar with what I'm used to and accustomed to. Not the not the movies, just the Marvel essence. Period. And it's a shame that yeah, they have to be. They are going to be compared to the movie. I don't necessarily need them to look like the movie. I just need them to have a great look. And to me, I'm not too happy with the look. They look like a family in a gated community at a costume party, dressed up like the Avengers. That's just the way I see it. It just, it's just, it's totally the way I see it, man. And they don't look like little legit Avengers. I just, I just don't see it there. So I mean, unlike if you watch. 
if you look at Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I mean, no, I, I know they grasped from the comic book feel, but that's what we look for. You know, give us that. You know, I, in, in, in Captain America with all those, with the padded gear, it just, dude, he's, he's Captain America. He has the super soldier there. Why does he need all that padding? <laughs> he never needed that much padding. That's just crazy. He looks like a goalie <laughs> in a hockey match. So, they do have a release date, and that's awesome. So, Marvel Avengers will release on May 15th, 2020 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox, Stadia, and PC. So, we'll see how all that goes. Um, like I said, this is a God of War game with the camera pan back. Um, which, again, I said at the end of the day, is not the worst thing in the world. It's definitely a good thing for them to take from that element. Uh, the graphics and frame animation does look great. I mean, it, it could look much better. It's more or less, it's not that graphics in, or animation. That's all, look, that looks great. It's the character design. The character design is still in question of that. Um, the crowd in Hall H seemed very excited. However, you do have to take account. And as a person who attended, who, uh, you know, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, when you're in San Diego Comic-Con, you have this feeling and emotion that everything around you is fantastic, and it is. So the fact that these guys are in Hall H, it really, honestly, it really, you can cheer almost anything just because I think they're more excited that they're in Hall H, the infamous Hall H, than the fact that they're watching that game. They won't cheer anything down <laughs> because they're in Hall H. Do you know how hard it is to get in Hall H? We've talked about this many times. So once you get in a Hall H, you're like, screw this. I'm in Hall H. I'm just going to kick back and enjoy the experience and that's what i believe it is so uh, i believe it's more on that i believe once they get to GamesCon or pax or whatever they're going to go to that's going to be a whole different atmosphere they got the enjoyment of being in hall h so it's the hall h atmosphere it's not exactly the atmosphere of them being excited or the emotion of them being excited for the game exactly so that is all i have for this segment i am going to take a break try to heal myself come back and in our final stage review, talk about the much anticipated, much excited uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. We'll do that right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dax Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langdon, the voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go. Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on TalkTimeLive.com. TalkTimeLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTimeLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live! folks we are back i am hopefully a little bit better i got some tea in me so some throat tea that my wife gave me so um it's all good hopefully that'll get me through and i hope so before i even get to anything i got a few things that i didn't mention on the last segment one is that for nintendo switch owners who have, who've been having drift issues with their joy con i myself was one of them i kind of you know replaced my analog uh sticks and and which is a very easy process but if you don't want to go through that route to do it manually yourself nintendo is now offering to replace your joy cons or to fix and repair your joy cons absolutely free no charge no questions at all uh no receipts are needed all you got to do is contact them let them know that you're having drifting issues and if you guys don't know what the drifting issue is it's like when your analog stick just by itself without even moving it is drifting upward 
And for some reason, there are a lot of different ways of handling that. You can replace the analog stick. You can, you know, clean it out or something like that. This is like classic Nintendo repair stuff. That's why I'm a little bit excited about doing stuff, because that means I get to take it apart and put it in and replace it myself. I, you know, order parts from Amazon and replace it myself. But if you don't want to go through that route and pay it out of pocket, you can absolutely contact Nintendo and they will gladly do it themselves. Uh, they'll ship it over to you or give you a, possibly a shipping slip or whatever, how they want to do it, and you, they'll repair it for you. They repaired one for me before. So, I mean, they, you know, even before all this, I don't remember paying for it back then either. So, you know, kudos to Nintendo to do that as well. The other news, which is way bigger news, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning, of course, this cold, I'm trying to get through it, is that coming soon, leading down to, and I want to say this now before this show ends, because there's a chance that I will forget saying this, I will appear in an article in the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, based on an interview talking about the upcoming Keystone Comic Con event, and the article is going to cover how to handle your first experience going into a major con. And I was contacted by a reporter from the and uh, from the Philadelphia Inquirer. If you guys don't know, you guys aren't from Philly. The Philadelphia Inquirer is one of the third oldest still ongoing newsprint newspaper out there. Like, it's a huge newspaper. We have our daily news, which is kind of like our local news. The Philadelphia Inquirer is like world news tonight. You know, and the fact that they contacted me about this, I am extremely humble and happy to be a part of that, along with being a part of Keystone Comic Con. So I am looking forward to absolutely, you know, getting in on this. The article should come out closer to the con date, if not maybe the week of. So stay tuned for that. I will remind you when it comes out. Trust me when I tell you so. Thank you to Abby White, the reporter that, you know, took the time to contact me and we talked about things. And um, great interview. She really enjoyed it. I am looking forward to seeing what they use in there it could be just like maybe a one thing that we talked about one subject that we talk about or another but um you know just the fact that she contacted me I, it was really awesome this is a really great honor you know you know to have really, really great year for talk time live in acmg i'll tell you that but i digress let's talk about our final stage review and it is our review of marvel ultimate alliance 3 the black order a nintendo exclusive if you will this nintendo exclusive was announced last year during the Game Awards with great shock and joy from Switch owners and non-Switch owners. This came out of nowhere. Nobody was thinking about this happening. They were doing their world premiere exclusives and lo and behold, Nintendo's logo pops up. And then we see familiar faces of all of these Marvel characters and they're like, what is this? What the hell is this? And lo and behold, we see the Guardians of the Galaxy teaming up with the Avengers, teaming up with the X-Men, and lo and behold, at the very end, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. The crowd went crazy. People at home went crazy. People in our ACMG Facebook group, the people who didn't own a Nintendo Switch at a time was looking at this like, okay, now I think it's the time to buy a Nintendo Switch. Whether they did or not is a whole nother thing, but... I can tell you, you're going to want to buy a Nintendo Switch now, and I'm going to tell you why. People have been clamoring for this sequel for of to this two-player co-op dungeon-crawling action RPG game, Diablo style, if you will. Actually, better than Diablo in this case, because of what they did. Um, we may have gotten more than what we asked for here. I'm, I'm telling you this. This game has f- uh, fans to the series right at home with very comfortable and familiar uh, gameplay styles that didn't shy away from the original while adding more great additional elements to assure co-op gameplay whether you're playing online lo- with friends or new people locally with friends or single player no matter what you play you're going to enjoy this game this game supersedes every th- everyone's positive reaction to the game when it was first announced you just you just had this feeling this game was going to be so great and it, it really is. Now Nintendo Switch owners will have yet another reason to be proud to own this game. And all, not only just own this game, but be proud to have the hottest game system out today. Nintendo struck gold when acquiring the rights to this exclusive game, and here's why. We're going to talk about this right now. Let's start 
with the story. The story for this version, and I say this version because this is no connection to the first two, which the first two did connect to each other. This one is totally different. They just totally revamped rebooted this entire thing so technically you might want to say that this is part one for a reason uh but this is loosely based on marvel's greatest comic book saga ever you can easily say that as well as the recent blockbuster hits infinity gauntlet for marvel comics and for marvel studios infinity war and endgame which by the way endgame's coming out next week so on digital so stay tuned get ready for that much like the movie the Black Order is involved and plays as the game's mid-boss characters, leading to the quote-unquote main boss, Thanos. And I say quote-unquote for a reason. I'm not going to spoil this game, but I will say that there's some twist in all of this. The story begins with the Guardians of the Galaxy, played by the original cast of Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale uh, series. Kudos to Nintendo for getting those guys back. I really enjoyed that game. A lot of people enjoyed that game from Telltale. I still am really sad at the outcome of what happened with Telltale, and I know they're they're getting saved in some form or fashion um, to finish the actual game. The um, they were actually able to finish the uh, last Walking Dead game, and it's just, it's just sad. Hopefully, they'll find their way back, or you know, they will evolve from this point some way somehow. Because they what they did was phenomenal. Every every game that they did was phenomenal. Um, but the Guardians of the Galaxy are coming from another planet that they were banned from thanks to Rocket and him stealing yet more valuables and customs from that planet. They then detect a strong energy reading from a Kree ship, which just happens to have Ronin and Nebula in there, which they are also acquiring the Affinity Stones. The Guardians battle Ronin and Nebula and the Kree forces in order to take pow the powerful stones away from them only to be encountered by two members of the Black Order, that being Proxima Midnight and... I forgot the... No, it was just Proxima Midnight, actually, uh, of Thanos' Black Order. She was the first one that appeared, and that's when everything started going to, uh, to for, uh, you know, into a chaotic situation. Starler managed to acquire one of the stones uh, while the other one shot away Dragon Ball style, <laughs> which spread it out across different parts of the universe and the galaxy. So Quill somehow teleported himself using the stone and the Guardians on Earth, where they meet up with the world's mightiest heroes, along with Nick Fury to help to get the stones before uh, Thanos get, to his, get his hands on them. This leads to a journey involving some of Marvel Comics' most famous and cherished characters as you create epic team-ups with the likes of Spider-Man, X-Men, both Spider-Mans, by the way, X-Men, Avengers, The Defenders, Doctor Strange, and many more. And take note, the voices of these characters in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 may sound familiar, and they very much are. I mean, like, they went all out for this game. I mean, I, the guys at Crystal Dynamics in... I'll probably say this again, but the guys from Crystal Dynamics and Marvel uh, and uh, Square Enix, I believe over San Diego Comic Con week, said that they were trying to give us a superhero experience that we dreamed of. Did they not know Friday was coming and this was coming out? I'm just saying. Not only that, but some of the voices that they mention in here it may sound familiar to you because, for instance, Spider Man. That voice sounds familiar because it's played once again by Yuri Longthal, my client, <laughs> my previous client, uh, who plays also Sasuke on Naruto, Miles Morales, who also played in Spider-Man PS4 as Miles Morales, uh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that, um, Miles Morales, who's played by Naji Jeters, who also played in the Spider-Man uh, PS4 version, The Hawk and Beast, at, at, for that matter, played by Fred Tatashore, who, by the way, will be appearing at Keystone Comic Con in my panel for the Voices of Overwatch and August 25th. So definitely, Philly, jump on it. He is a tremendous talent. I am looking forward to talking with him and Jennifer Hale and Charlotte Chung as well, the Voices of Overwatch. So it's really great that he's reprising his role as the Hawk. I actually knew him more as the Hawk before I knew he was uh, Soldier 76. But... He's a tremendous talent. 
looking forward to that and many of the voices of the upcoming marvel avengers games uh from square enix and crystal dynamics are also in this game as well such as nolan north he doesn't play uh he 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 plays a different character than he does on the upcoming marvel avengers game but he's reprising his role as rocket because he was in the telltale games and uh also deadpool which he does tremendous in as well. Laura Belly, who reprises her role as Black Widow on both games as well. So you have that going on there. Um, let's talk about the gameplay real quick. The gameplay, if you play the, old, the first two Ultimate Alliance games, you'll feel right at home from here. The game allows you to take control of four characters and uh, you un- that you pretty much unlock throughout the game. You start with a certain amount of characters in the game. Well, in fact, you start with the Guardians of the Galaxy and then other characters will unlock you know head on if you pre-order the game you automatically get deadpool unlocked um already so that's always a good thing as well um you will be able to switch characters fluidly during every point of the game while the while other ai will fight alongside with you you will be able to have the ability of controlling the action of your ai as well so you gotta hit the you gotta hit the um what is it the lz button on your controller you got to tap it twice to really get them to do what you want them to do whether you want them to attack full on you know retreat whatever uh so you have that out going on you will also be given a chance to revive your fallen teammates but doing so uh you got to make sure that enemies are not around because if you do they will take you out as well you will only have three opportunities to revive your character you know your character team member so choose wisely as to who you're gonna revive there because once they're gone and you're not advantage and your level's not up, man, you're going to have a really hell of a time. It, it, there is a grind to this game, but it's not like an annoying grind. You will eventually overcome all of those aspects and it'll become easier to play when you play it over again. And you will play it over again. Trust me. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 also has some new gameplay features that invokes powerful combo strikes called uh, Synergy Links or in synergy attacks which allows two of the four characters to perform their powerful uh their powers together which deals more damage to your enemies as well and it also unlocks doing these comp these synergy uh attacks also unlocks guarded items as well throughout the game so you know by doing the synergy attacks you will be able to unlock and get some more stuff that'll help you you know level up better throughout the game it's really cool um you also have alliance extreme attacks which is kind of similar to the ultimate attacks from the last two games uh which returns here but as a separate attack as opposed to i mean they did this before in in the first game but the deal is now what they did was that you have four attacks it used to be like in the first game the fourth attack that you get was like the ultimate attack for each character now it's just an extra attack with you having a bigger attack coming from the extreme attacks so they give you more options now which is awesome uh so you got that going on if all of your character alliance meters fill up you can fight using all of their attacks hitting the r l and l button multiple times to do an extreme attack which just it would dishes out enormous damage that you would need and depending on how much you level up your character damages increase to the to a point that is easily able to destroy a boss and enemies all around so as you level up you become way more powerful you know omega level if you will so that's an awesome thing to do but that's also a custom thing that you did you know you replayed the game again and you just it's kind of new game plus feature that they have the rpg elements which is another great trend of ultimate alliance uh is the ability to level up your characters to become very powerful as i just mentioned and run through this game with ease which you absolutely always want to do with over 40 36 characters to choose from uh with different abilities this game has enough replay value to absolutely get you through this game and and enjoy this game very much and play it over and over again because each character has some really cool different moves to do and each one of them you only get two to start and as you get to like level 15 you unlock another one you get to level 20 you unlock another one from there so there are plenty of ways to level up your character uh such as using credit currency allowing you to enhance your uh, your alliance ability as well as modify and upgrade iso 8 
ISO 8 is a element that they use a lot of times in the video games and I think I don't I'm not sure if they use have to use this in the comics or whatever like that or is ever mentioned in the comics but ISO 8 is uh, a source of energy fragment that you equipped to get uh, to give you like an advantage while fighting so ISO 8 can enhance your vitality uh, your defense extreme gauge strength energy and so forth and so on from there uh, you can easily modify ISO 8 in the lab mode as you combine multiple ISO 8 and currency to get uh, more powers ISO fragments for your characters in a use in battle uh, this is also alliance enhancement there's also alliance enhancements as well so alliance enhancements which you can use to enhance points this is something that also you see in a lot of rpg games as well you know it, it allow you to enhance your te your entire team no matter who you play as your your hp your xp your defense your criticals all that stuff it'll it, it'll be enhanced here the more that you play through the game the more that you earn currency and enough to be able to unlock more and become more powerful from there uh xp cubes xp cubes give you the advantage to booster your xp faster and level up and gain more attacks faster with each character so you'll find those these are one of the things that you'll find in those boxes that you have to unlock <coughs> excuse me that you end up unlocking soon so uh that's always an added bonus as well other options Aside from the robust, I'm sorry, uh, the other options aside from the robust mode, you also have other ways to play. You can level up your characters, you can unlock costumes and character. Well, I don't know about the unlocking character costumes yet because when I unlock what they claim is costumes is nothing more than just color changes. So I have yet to see an actual costume change yet. So, but I'm still playing through it as well. I haven't unlocked the Hawks mode and infinity mode yet which we'll be talking about right now uh infinity mode consists of side missions found within the game in the form of a dimensional tear in a fabric of reality uh that is you know if you play through the game they'll explain that in there you can unlock these modes once you find them once they found but also some of the missions require you to, uh, to be at a certain level uh even if you're at that level you need to supersede that level because it eventually will take you out. Like, I played uh, the Hawk mode. I finally reached him up to level 20, which unlocks that Infinity mode, which is like a solo mission. Some of these, some characters have solo missions that allow you to unlock costumes or unlock characters in there. Uh, so, you have that. And eventually, it's not easy to do on exactly the unlocking stage. You should go like 20, level 25 or level 30 with the Hawk before you go and reach that stage because those guys will give you a run for your money right there. So um, the stars you collect in the, in the Infinity Mode unlocks other missions uh, while it will give you a chance to earn new characters and all that stuff like that, like I just mentioned. And I like it. I like it. It's not as fun as the original mission modes but those mission modes were also challenging as well if you weren't at a certain case so so it, it literally is just another way of doing the decide missions as well so it's pretty cool i like what they did and it allows you to you know you can eventually use that to level up your characters as well too uh but there are some stipulations to some of them like timing and all that stuff so you can only you got to kill these guys within a certain time which means the best case scenario is that you have to be higher than the level they require for you to really beat that stage the way they require so um they're in this gallery mode which i really love i really really like gallery mode gallery mode allows you to check out great content about the game such as report which gives you an intel on all of the characters as told by the guardians of the galaxy mostly rocket but then side you know mentions by all of the other guardians as well it's really cute um which also tells you, it gives you certain information about the Infinity Stones, all of the characters in the game, and many stages in the game's story. So it gives you a lot of in-depth, you know, stuff in there. I really enjoyed it. If you're a fan of all of this stuff and you like to get more information, this reminds me of the days when we used to get the uh, Marvel Comics, you know, cards and stuff like that. And we would get all the intricate information on each character, their power stats and everything. That's what this is right now. And it's, it's really cool. I, I really enjoy it. Um, they also have, you can, once you beat the game, you can also view all of 114 fantastic cutscenes in this game without playing through it. But you're going to want to play through this regardless. 
but just the option that you'll be able to, if you wanted to just look at the story, you could just from there. So I, it's all, every cutscene in the game is fantastic. I absolutely enjoyed this game so much. Um, if you love the epic instrumental music in the game, you will have access to all 30 tracks in the game as well once you beat the game. Again, just uh, so great. This, this has all the elements of everything you loved about the first two. Uh, it's just awesome. And if you love absolutely phenomenal, uh, phenomenal character design that is in the game, you'll really appreciate this because they allow fans to uh, check out all of the sketches and illustration. I don't know who's the artist of this game. I will find out who's the artist of the game. The artist is phenomenal. I, I, can't, I can't express to you how fantastic the character design in this game is. And the fact that you get to see the behind the scenes illustrations of them, I, man, why isn't this guy working for Marvel? <laughs> you know, whoever is responsible for this, the illustration, I mean, it's just every character is perfectly drawn proportionately. Uh, it's just, I can't describe to you. It reminds, it, it is very comp, uh, Capcom ish, Capcom esque, if you will. I mean, the illustration, this is like Udon Entertainment style illustration, just perfectly drawn. I love it. Um, then you got chapter select, uh, you know, once you play through the games, uh, you can play through, you know, superior difficulty, which I only suggest you do that if you if your characters are like 46 or higher, which allows you to, you know, up the advantage of being able to play the game again and, you know, go up to like level 75 or whatnot from there, which then allows you to play through other infinity mode games that are of higher level. You will need to go that high. They, they want you to play this game a lot, and you will end up playing this game a lot because it's very enjoyable to play. So you will also have the ability to switch other characters using Hero Select, uh, whether in the game or at the uh, select screen at the beginning of the, uh, the title screen. Uh, so you could do that there. Enter any chapter in, in any save point that you like in the game. So uh, let's give the positives and the negatives before I give the overall here. The positives is that this game, without a shadow of a doubt, is the best of all three of the games, of the Ultimate Alliance games, bar none. They took from everything, they took everything of what they did from those two games and made it just even better with better character design and better visuals. Uh, just mind blowing. And somewhat gave it that Nintendo feel too. You know, you gotta appreciate that. Everything from character design to visual effects that celebrates the best of Marvel of the Marvel comic universe, uh, heavy hitter voice acting, and on from top to bottom, you know, actresses and actresses in the industry, you know, just the best of the best. Fluid and phenomenal gameplay uh, that is very easy to jump into, even if you never played the first two games prior to this. Uh, just a lot of fun engaging story which takes from the comic book and the cinematic series and manages to balance them together it's hard to deny the absolute success that this game has provided marvel fans with again a major twist uh at the end it's really cool marvel ultimate lines may be the second best marvel game out uh since um spider-man's uh the ps4 version and i'm saying it, there's i don't know if it'll ever top that because spider-man at this point in time is the highest grossing spider-man game or comic book game out today right now they just uh it, it even topped uh it officially topped batman arkham knight so this is officially that game is officially the top i don't see marvel ultimate alliance topping that but i do see it becoming very successful there's no way. The only negatives I could really give to this game, to be honest, is that there was a lack of intimate detail touches that the first two games had, such as, you know, those special interactions with the characters during the character stage save points areas. Um, there was a time in the previous two games, if you use certain characters to interact with other characters that connect in the comic book universe, you would get a special conversation along those lines. You don't get that now. Uh, if the character is in the game in the same room to have that conversation, but then you select a character too, that character would disappear. You would never have that conversation. Now, in Ultimate Alliance 3, however, you don't have that option along with the characters maybe seeing double. Like if you use Captain America and you're at a save point, like say in Avengers Tower and you're Captain America, you'll see another Captain America in there. I think that attention to detail they need to fix. 
I, I think they need to fix that. I would love for them to add more to the game as far as the interaction stuff. Like if Tony and 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 if Tony was in there talking to Cap, Cap should there shouldn't be another Cap in the room because that takes you that takes away the disbelief of the situation, takes you out of it. Not that much, but it's just something. It's a little small, you know, nitpick with that part. But I knew they were very careful of doing that. Like. If you pick on like Ultimate Alliance 2, especially if you pick that and you had a conversation with Tony Stark and you're Captain America, you guys would have this intimate conversation about something that happened in a comic book that, you know, it was like an insider's thing. And they don't have that on here. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world that they don't have it. But aside from that, if you're in the room as Captain America, you should not see another Captain America. So that's little one negative, but it doesn't take away from the entire experience at all. The other thing that I really, I don't want to call this a negative, but I wish they would have had back is that they no longer have the Marvel quiz. And I always thought that that was a lot of fun because it was great to be able to actually read or try to figure out some of the, the knowledge that you knew about Marvel Comics and get all of the questions right that you could possibly get right. And not only that, once you get those questions right, you earn, you know, XP experience points that allow you to level up your character more. And that was that's not in there anymore. So that was the only thing that I wish that they had, but they didn't have in there. So it, it really those are just two elements in there that really doesn't take away from the experience of the game. The game is absolutely not great. It's fantastic. So overall, this game provides us with what we enjoyed from Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, as well as the X-Men games like this, which I actually still own on a PSV. I still have the uh, UMD cartridge to the uh, X-Men game. And I believe, I believe maybe Ultimate Alliance as well. I'm not sure. But it gives you hours upon hours of gameplay, a lot of replay value, tons of content, and fanfare that will please both Marvel Comics fans and Marvel Studios fans. Uh, makes, it makes this a very hard-to-deny game. You know, it just does. Um, with the leaked gameplay from the Marvel Avengers game, it will definitely be compared to. You're definitely going to compare the two experiences of this game and that game as well. Uh, I think the one plus that this game will absolutely have on it is that they got way more characters and they got the X-Men. And they will have the Fantastic Four. And they will have the Punisher and Moon Knight. And those are, I don't believe that a lot of those um, characters will be in the game. Let alone Spider-Man is rumored not to be in the game either. They, they're keeping really quiet on that, but we'll see. Because that's done by Sony. And this is done by Crystal Dynamics. So I don't, I don't, really don't believe that there will be a connection to those games in there. Despite the fact that they do look just, uh, you know, they do have some realistic, photorealistic uh, comparisons of the games in there. So it, it's really interesting. So, uh, but compare and contrast, it will happen, bar none. So you got that. Not only did Marvel Studio, not only uh, that, in Marvel Studios fashion. There is an end credit scene in this game that I will reveal, to, which shows two galaxies appearing out of nowhere in space, letting us know Marvel Ultimate Alliance may have another game in the works that Sony, uh, that I'm sorry, that Marvel Studios and Nintendo may be working on another Ultimate Alliance game, and this it, this may not be the last that we see of it. So. If I'm giving this a grade, my God, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm giving this an A+. Even despite not having those little two things that I wanted. Uh-uh. It's, it, this is, I absolutely love this game. I knew this game was going to be awesome, and it was. And I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it, because this game is forever. <laughs> this will be a replay game on my Switch library for years to come bar none so folks that will do it for this edition of select start thank you so very much for you know just working with me through this un unforeseen situation this sore stupid sore throat that i have this cold that i'm developing and hopefully i will get better by sunday because sunday i will be reviewing once upon a time in hollywood as well as batman hush i will be reviewing both of those i'm looking forward to it uh our old you know, our old guest Mike Moe will be playing Bruce Lee on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I heard great things about this, and he he's just moving it. I'm looking forward to this as well. And if you do want to learn more about Mike Moe, go to TalktownLive.com forward slash exclusive and check out the actual interview 
I had with him way back when he came out with Street Fighter uh, Ass- um, Assassin's Fist. And he played Ryu, if you guys recall. So he's playing a lot of iconic, uh, you know, martial arts heroes in our lives. He's like, he's kind of like the, uh, he's kind of like, um, oh God, uh, I'm so, I'm so out of it right now. Forget it. But, um, Chadwick Boseman, actually, that's what I was going to say. He's kind of like the Chadwick Boseman for martial arts stars. He plays every single martial arts star out there. Chadwick Boseman plays every single black history figure. (laughs) <laughs> on in Hollywood. So he's getting in, he's getting to be in that stage, but I had the pleasure of getting a chance to get him before he got to this level. And we get to talk about a lot of things. Um Assassin's Fist what went on to there, what he, you know, what he would like to do in the world of Marvel, which he did. Um as well as other things as well, his martial arts studios, uh, MMA. We actually do talk about him in Empire. He was in Empire as well. And we also talk about Jesse Smollett, which is hilarious now to think about that uh, and what we talk about there because we he was awesome at the time when that was out at the time, too. So, um, Jesus, Uh, I got to go back and listen to that interview. It's hilarious. But, yeah, go out of your way to check it out there. But, yeah, I will be reviewing it next week. And um, whatever news comes out from that point next week, also on Select Start, uh, Kill a Kill, if comes out this week, I will be reviewing that on uh next week's episode it comes out friday so i'll get a chance to play it and the ninja warriors once again will be out as well so those are two games that i will be reviewing along with any news that comes out hopefully i will be back in order next week so thank you for bearing with me through this entire thing again and um if you want to listen to this and all our other episodes go to TalkTownLive.com, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, and Popping for this and much more. And I did say I will probably work on going to Spotify after August, so stay tuned for that as well. And of course, we're heading down to August 23rd to the 25th, Keystone Comic Con by Repop down there. I will be hosting a panel, two panels actually. Uh, the first one is for the Voices of Overwatch, and the other one is for the Art of Street Fighter starring Longbow and Jeffrey Cruz, a.k.a. The Chamba. So stay tuned for that as well. That is still all in the works and leading now to there. So thanks, everybody. Again, thank you for bearing with me again and pray that I get through this. That will do it. On behalf of myself, this is Dak Xavier Josiah saying, learn to let go, live life, and love all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. I am out there. Take care, and I will talk to you guys Sunday. Music for this episode is provided by Game Chops. Check out these great chiptune tracks and more at music.gamechops.com.